Good afternoon. This is Faith Life ECG, C. Dell Huddleston Ministry with Reverend Mrs. C. Dell Huddleston, Roberta. Good to have her here today. Glad to be We're here. We're going to, next week, she's going to do some singing for us. Maybe a service, even. Can't make no promises, but I hope. And uh, today is the May 27th, and this is our PM service. And we're, we're talking about our uh, uh, position and, uh, and the promise in, in Christ and what he's done for us. And all of this is the, the second part of this uh, message. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to meet with us here this afternoon. And then also uh, for those that's uh, sick and, and needs prayer, we're going to pray for them. And so uh, we're going to do that. So you're going to join with us as you can. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, today, God, to move in this message today father god that the spirit of god will be real uh, do a work lord jesus we pray father in the lives of the people encourage help me to be encouragement not discouragement lord help me lord to see uh, uh, you in a greater measure lord as we uh, teach the word of god and preach the word of god and God, we thank you for each one that that comes on here and in the future. Lord, those in in uh, far off lands, God, that that uh, uh, gets this, we ask you, God, to bless them and their ministry, Lord, wherever they're at, Lord. Lord, the 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 folks in Africa, God, we pray for them. We pray for their provision. We pray, God, for each area of their life, Lord. We pray, Father. God, we pray for the missionaries uh, there and in, in that country. And we ask God the blessings of God. We pray, Lord, for our leadership and our organization. God, we pray, Father God, that the, the blessings of the Lord would flow in California especially, all over the nation, but yet in California. Uh, we need help, Lord. We pray for these survivors of the shooting, Lord. And we realize, Lord, it's uh, uh, not a gun problem, but a, but a mental problem, Lord, that people have that have guns. And God, we ask, Lord Jesus, God, that you uh, move in, in, in these people's lives, we pray, Father. God, we, we, we pray today, God, and not, not knowing who or wh whom, uh, Lord, but we pray for the mentally ill, Lord, today. God, that they'd be uh, healed in their bodies, Lord. And God, we pray for our government, Lord, to do the right thing uh, with its people, Father. God, whatever happened there on that in that group that that uh, where they were shot, we know that's all wrong. But yet, uh, something brought that apart uh, on, Lord. And we ask you, God, to to move for each one of those people their families, Lord, and the company, Lord, that we work for, Lord. And we ask God your blessing and ask your spirit to have its way in this service this afternoon, Father. In the name of Jesus. We're talking about our position and also our provision and position. And uh, we, we uh, preached a little bit this morning and we're going to uh, tell you a little bit about it and then we'll get right into where we left off. I thought we must have confidence in the value of the blood of Christ and that which he accomplishes in our salvation. When Israel was getting ready to leave Egypt at the last act of God to bring Pharaoh to his knees was that the firstborn of all Egypt was to die. God said to the Israelites, Kill a lamb and put the blood on the doorpost and lintel 
When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. It was the blood that saved them from the death of the firstborn. Good afternoon, George Wright. Good to see you here. God bless you. It was the blood that saved them. We must believe and that and hold to it all through the process of bringing us into the image of Christ. That's what we're kind of talking about right now. In the face of Satan and his forces, we must always remember that God has made provision for the redeemed. The provision mainly is the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus was not to fear... We are not to fear, we are to be filled with courage and faith. We must need look at some of the truths that God has given us to rejoice in. This pilgrimage is toward our heavenly home. There's a lot ahead of us in, in conforming to the image of the Lord. It is wrong thoughts that makes you believe that you cannot have to face the devil and yourself. The wilderness is not a thousand miles off your pathway. It is directly in line with your walk with God and the Holy Spirit is going to lead us all the way through. However you understand this position that you have in Christ, you always stand. Our position in Jesus has great benefits. Being in Jesus implies that he surrounds our spiritual existence. If you're in water, that water surrounds you. If you are in Christ, it simply means that every part of Jesus Christ surrounds your spiritual being. This also means that the order for Satan to touch us, he must first come through the Lord Jesus Christ. This, this restricts all attacks and certainty as the hedge protected Job as we read in the first two chapters of the book of Job. Then again in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, God tells us, There hath no temptation taken you, but such was common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above you are able, but with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Here's where we start our afternoon service, or this is the new part. The escape is the Lord Jesus Christ. When we come to know this victory is certain, in Psalms 91, 1, it said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Now, you don't have to be an expert to know the secret place of the Most High is the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalms 91 and 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Verse 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome of the pestilence. In Psalms 91.4, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth, shall be a shield and a buckler. 5. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Six, for nor for the pestilence that walk in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Verse 7, A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes, verse 8, only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Verse 9, Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, of thy habitation. Thou shalt no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Verse 10. Verse 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all his ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the antler, the young lion and the dragon, thou shalt trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he know my name. Verse 15. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Verse 16. With long life I will satisfy him 
and show him my salvation. What a hope. What a promise God has given us. Thank God for the promises of God. Thank God for the Word of God. Do you understand the Word of God? Since Jesus is Lord to all true believers as well as the Savior, we are His servants. Paul made it very plain that we are bondservants of the Lord, and therefore any attack on us is also on the Lord. All His servants, as His servants, we are responsible. I'm not... Excuse me, I want to reread re -read it. As his servants, we are his responsibility. We're responsible, all right, but we're his responsibility. I'm not a hard hand. He protects us, defends us. He supplies our needs, and he arms us with weapons. He leads us into battle and gives us direction that are guaranteed to succeed and empower us for victory. Isn't it a wonderful thing to let be under the Lordship of Jesus Christ? It's wonderful that He is the one in charge. In our text, we chose this, this uh, in the beginning of the lesson, <clears throat> which He wrought, uh, Ephesians one twenty, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him in His own right hand in heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in the world to come. And hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things in the church, to the church. We see that Jesus has been exalted above all spiritual realms. This includes Satan and his kingdoms. It also shows that all of Satan and his forces are beneath the feet of this wonderful Lord. Thank God. <laughs> uh, if we're with the Lord, well, then he's under our feet. Satan, I'm talking about. Ephesians 2 and 6, And hath raised us up together and made us set together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What a wonderful thought. Wonderful thought there. This informs us that we are in Jesus. Listen to it. The implication is clear. As believers, we are positioned spiritually above Satan. We are on the higher ground. That is always the advantage in any war. We are in Christ, Paul said, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in which is to come. The earth has become Christ's footstool. His enemy is under his feet and I am in him. This means that you and I, the true believer of Christ, have been placed in a position above Satan. When we fight the devil, we do not fight as inferiors. We fight from a superior position of power in Christ. We're in Christ. We need not bargain, beg, or plead, but only claim this heavenly position through Jesus and operate in the power and the victory brought to us by that victory that he that he provides for us it is not a battle but it is not our battle but his however we must enforce it to do so we must recognize this position i particularly want you to see this because the blood has secured uh, the, this position, we're going to look at the blood of Jesus very extensively. We're going to look at every aspect of it, what it means to God, what it means to us. We must have been brought into this position by the blood of Jesus. This is the ground of victory. As we stand here on the ground, secured by the blood, we can hurl the mighty name of Jesus and, at the forces of darkness. We truly more than conquerors in Christ. Never in history has the church been more challenged than this year, or right now even. I've been in the church since 1970, and never has the devil so openly challenged the church as in this day. Never have I needed to know my position and weapons any more than I do at this time. 
I need I need to know what the Holy Ghost is going to do. I need to know what He will do. I need I need to know what the blood of Jesus has accomplished. I need I need to know what sanctification, the process that God's taking place in our lives, and know the difference between Jesus leading us somewhere and the devil trying to destroy us someplace. Jesus leads us. Uh, to to a higher ground all the time if we'll just look at him and put our faith in him and trust in him and follow the word of God and allow the spirit and the word to line up in our life and we'll be blessed. We'll be blessed people. We are blessed people. Paul lists some of the, these weapons which include commitment to truth. That's a weapon. Think, well, that's an obligation. No, that's a weapon against the devil. Godly living is a weapon against the devil. Bold witness for Christ, faith, love, hope of eternity with God, the word of God and persistent prayer is weapons that we have against Satan and his foes. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 8 said, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for the helmet the hope of salvation. In Ephesians 6.11, down through a number of verses, it says, Put on the whole armor of God, that you be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take on you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. When he's talking about here that you may be able to withstand, remember it's coming your way. You withstand it. In the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your loins girded about with the truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the, the Word of God. And then here's part of, here's part of this armor that we don't mention so much. Praying always with prayer and supplication, watching thereto with preservance and supplication for all saints. See this this is important in, in in after we have on all this armor is we have a prayer life that, that pleases God. I know there is victory. Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. But in my own life in the area into which God has called me, I must enforce this victory. You know, it it it's only in the position of the born again believer an advantage, but God also has given us many exceedingly great promises. We have been placed in this exalted position in Christ, and if we abide in Christ, Satan has to come through Christ to get to us. We've said that already. We are his responsibility. All this was demonstrated at Pentecost. In Luke ten nineteen said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, withstanding in this, rejoice not that spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. The spirit world was made subject to us as in we are in Christ. Matthew seven twenty two said, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name have we cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. This serves as a stern warning that this power is no evidence of salvation and not really the most important area. Rejoicing salvation through his blood. But it is from this position that we operate this of the utmost importance Power has been promised. We've been promised power. But you know, one place the writer said, stir up that power. Stir up the gift that's in you. Huh? If it's kindled, let's blow on it. 
Matthew 28, 18, And Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and earth. It was given to him as the man Christ Jesus, which means it was given to his church. That power is there for us as we abide in the place into which we've been put by this blood of Jesus. Jesus has all power, including that victory over Satan. He, he bought us with his blood. In Ephesians 1.19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us were to believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. I was thinking of this, this scripture come to me. It says, uh, goes uh, like this, why, not, why you can't think that uh, Jesus could be raised from the dead. There's a scripture in there. It talks about his ways is higher than our ways and our ways, you know, than that. This tells us that the very power of God that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power granted to the believer. In 1 John 4, 4, you have got little children and have overcome them because greater is in you than he is in the world. See, we gotta we gotta practice this 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 scripture, First John four four. I'm gonna reread it. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is in you than He is in the world. But it make me think about those uh, preachers' kids that went out to cast the devils out of them, out of a guy, and he they, they, he said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? And so we got to have the Christ in us that the devil recognizes Christ in us when we go to battle. That we're Christ-like. And this greater power that God give us the Holy Ghost to do His work in is there to help and remind the devil that he's, he's got to take his flight. This tells us that the Holy Spirit resides in our bodies. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy, Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you are brought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. We are told here that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. So he who is in us is greater than Satan. It is only as Satan robs us of our power or blinds us to it that he has any chance of defeating us. And he'll do that. He'll try to blind us to the promises of God and, and the position God has given us. And he'll, he'll try to rob us of what God has for us. And he does that by... by um, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of the word, but he does that by, by uh, slander. Slandering us for no other word that I can think of right at the moment. I had another word there and I lost it. Uh, certainly we're going to do war with him. Certainly we're going to face him. You, we, you ain't going to get away with not facing the adversary in, in lots of times in your life as we grow and conform to the image of God. See, God is working us. We talked about sanctification earlier, and we got to know the difference between justification and sanctification. Because in sanctification, uh, when the Lord deals with us, we got to know that, hey, we're still saved. Sometimes the Lord talks to us and wants us to do things, and the devil say, look at there, uh, you know, you're not even saved. Uh, well, you are saved if you're under the blood of Jesus Christ and, you're, and, and God is working on you. We believe in progressive sanctification. When we got saved, we were set apart unto God but, and, and then now we're measuring up what God has done for us in our justification. We must demonstrate that we, what we have is greater than what He is. I'm talking about Satan. James 4.10 said, Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Minds me of a preacher. He comes in and he 
young man, he just began to preach. And he comes in, he's all puffed up. Man, I'm going to preach tonight. I got a preaching date, and I got a message, and I'm going to preach, and I'm going to put the devil to flight, and I'm going to do all of this and all that. And he got up there and got robbed of his message. And he, he went out all, all went out all down in the dumps and all because he knew he didn't get the job done. After all he had said, the preacher told him, said, son, said, you know, if you'd have come in like you went out, you'd have went out like you come in. So humbleness is a great part of this living for God and trusting God, especially when we stand before people and stand before our enemies. We, we're brave against the devil, but we're humble and before God in doing that. That's, that's important, important in our lives. I could have been that preacher. This shows us the necessity of submitting to God before we enter the battle. You know, it, it makes a difference in praying before church, praying before preaching. It makes a difference. Some people today we don't think there's any difference, so we come in and we just we just get in chat, 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 chat. And next thing you know, church started. Nobody's prayed, nobody's asked God to uh, bless the service. We get up, we we start our song service, start our our uh, whatever we do and to have church, and 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 we fail to pray. Why? Because we're too busy doing other things. And then we want the glory of God come down in a, in a congregation without uh, prayer. We could get people to pray, whether they pray in their pew or, or pray at the altar or, or pray before you get to church or whatever you, you do. But still, we need to uh, honor God's house. I like some churches I've been to. Uh, they, they go in. I don't care when they come in. They go to the altar and kneel down and pray. I've been in I've been in some Catholic church, uh, it'd be at a funeral or something at the Catholic church, and people come down, and they kneel down, then they sit in their pew. That's an honor. They they honor they honor God in that in that fashion. I'm not talking about the Catholic church. I'm not uh, anything about it except to see people that do that. And so this shows us the necessity of submitting to God before we enter to battle. If we submit to God, then we can successfully resist the devil and he will flee from us. In Romans 16, 20, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. This helps us to realize that if we obey God and walk with God, we can see Satan bruised. Instead of our doing all the suffering, we can actually trample him under our feet, our foot, and leave him bruised. Satan and the angel cannot die, but surely can be made to hurt. That is what God has said to us. If we abide in the place where we've been brought through the power of the blood of Jesus, then we are in a position that we are the victor and it's Satan who will be the one that is destroyed. We must believe that. And as a minister of Christ, we must preach the blood. There's a drought of preaching of the blood of Christ in the church today. It is not a wonder to me there is little victory because we have not taught people to plead the blood, to stand on the blood, to believe in the value of the blood. Our preaching must take on the preaching of the blood so the confidence of people can be restored in the true value of the blood of Jesus Christ. As we proclaim the blood and the people come to re really know that the ground secured by the blood is the place from which we operate in total victory, then they will rise up and believe. It is sad fact that today a very few uh, Courses or songs were written with any theology of the blood of Christ. I, I heard on the television today where, where um, our governor said, well, what's wrong over this killing? What's happening to us? I know what's happening to us. We left God out of our lives. 
Uh, we were trying to take the church out. We've already left, took God out of the, out of our lives. I'm talking about in general sense, not in the, the believer, but in the unbeliever. We allow everything, we voted in everything that we can vote in uh, to pass the law against uh, uh, what Jesus teaches from his word. And now we're wondering what's wrong. Well, we need to get on our knees and ask God to help us. We know what's wrong. I know what's wrong. If he had asked me, I could tell him. We've left out God on purpose. We didn't just overlook him this morning or when something happens. We left him out on purpose as people of America. This is a tragedy that it's incalculable when we consider how those old songs of the gospel, such as there's power, wonder work, and power in the blood of the Lamb, impacted the believer with theology would keep them at all times. You know, today, it's the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. On a try, if I can find it, I'm going to sing us a song. I want to thank uh, Janice and Val Christie, Yvonne Galbraith, for being on our program today. Glad to have each one here. And say God bless you. We're going to uh, we're going to uh, if I can find it here. I want to share something with you. I ain't sung this in a while, but I want to try it. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Now ransom from sin a new work begun. Sing praises to the Father and praises to the Son. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved I'm saved. Glory I'm saved. My sins are all pardoned. My guilt is all gone. Saved I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved, I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. The angels rejoice because it is done. A child of a father join heirs with the son. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved, my sins are all pardoned, my guilt is all gone. Saved, I'm saved, glory, I'm saved, I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. The Father, he spoke, and his will it was done. Great price of my pardon, his own precious Son. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. My sins are all pardoned. My guilt is all gone. Saved, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. All hail to the Father, all hail to the Son, all hail to the Spirit, the great three in one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved. My sins are all pardoned. My guilt is all gone. Saved, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved, I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. I want to redo this one here, I love it. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. The angels rejoice because it is done. A child of the Father join heir with the Son. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. The Father he spake, and his will it was done. 
great price of my pardon, his own precious son, saved by the blood of the crucified one, saved with me, Rhoda. Saved, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved, I'm saved. My sins are all pardoned, my guilt is all gone. Saved, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved, I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved, I'm saved. Glory, I'm saved, I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. You know, the blood will save. The blood will keep us saved. We'll put our trust in, in Jesus and what he accomplished. It's a little short this afternoon. I couldn't get it all in this morning, and I, I wanted to finish that uh, and, and wanted you to hear. I know different people probably here today that uh, maybe not been here this morning or vice versa, but yet uh, I thank God for his provision and and his wonderful love and his and his compassion and mercy and and the good things of God that God has given us and all testify for us as host. Just thank the Lord for being so good to us, for watching over us and helping us each and every day. I just love him because he's my savior. Okay, let's let's pray for those individuals. We put off praying for the individuals till now. We want to pray for Brother and Sister Nicolay. We appreciate them. And uh, Sister Nicolay had been in the hospital, and she she's out as far as the last. They come and visit us the other day. And I thank God for that visit. I needed that. And they come, and, and we're going to pray for them special right now. Father, we come for the Nicolays today. Their church, their bodies, every aspect of their lives, whatever, whatever is going on there, Lord, in their life today, Father, we ask you to bless it, heal their bodies. We pray, Jesus, Lord, I pray for my my cousin Jimmy Hall and his his condition with his cancer, God, and we hope they got it all and and and, and he's healed. I haven't heard. Of, I hear through the daughter, and the daughter's been a, been a moving, and so I hadn't heard. And so for Jimmy Hall today, Lord, we ask you, God, to to move in his life, his family. God, I know that they're they're trusting you, trying to trust you to to bring him through, God. And I've always wanted to visit him, and never have. And I ask you, God, that you would just heal his body completely. Thank you, Father God, for him, Lord. Lord, my my cousin, first cousin, Joe Ray Fowler, Lord, and we ask you, God, to move in his body, God, his his situation. Lord, I pray for him. I pray, God, that uh, the Spirit of God is is uh, moves in his life. Bless his life, his family, his sisters, God, and, the, and his sister-in-laws and, and his nieces and nephews, God. I pray for the whole Fowler family today, Father God. I ask God that your, your grace and glory would fill the way with them. I pray for Al Rush today, Lord, that uh, whether he's home or still in the hospital, I don't know. But I ask God that you would help him to... to uh, uh, be whole in the name of Jesus. I pray for his family. Lord, I pray for Brother George and Sister D today. God, I thank you for them. They're blessed people. And I pray, God, that your will be done in their lives and help them, encourage them, Lord. Lord, raise Brother George out of that bed. Father, we pray, Jesus, God, and, and uh, give him strength in his body. Lord, we pray, Jesus. For Jeff, Lord, today, Madaris, I pray for him was in the hospital yesterday and we pray God that uh, whatever his need is we talk to him on the phone and we've asked we asked your will Lord in his life today Father God to do a great work do a great work reveal yourself to him in the name of Jesus 
for my friend Jesse, God. I pray for Jesse. God, that you heal his heart condition. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. His family, his boys, his girl. Lord, we pray for him. For Arlene uh, Moorhead today, Father, I pray for her and her job and her work and her her life and uh, her spiritual life as long and, and physical life. Every aspect, God, I pray for them, Lord, in the name of Jesus, her and her friends, Lord. I pray for Nancy Metcalf, Lord, that you would move in her life, Lord. Lord, I pray for Cheryl, Dennis, and Carl and their family. And Lord, I, I, I heard that they she come out successful, and God, we're just praying for complete healing in her body. Lord, for my cousin Willie, Lord, we're praying for Willie today. God, that he would uh, make his kidneys whole, Lord. In the name of Jesus, make his kidneys whole. Take my hand right now. Over Father, in the name of Jesus, if we're to agree touching any one thing, God, I pray for Willie today. God, touch them kidneys today. In the name of Jesus, I praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray for Tam, Pam, to get uh, better, well. Pray for a friend Jeff, Lord, that you would bless him, encourage him, Lord. Lord, I pray for Rick in Woodland. God, he needs your he needs your help, Lord. My sister Levon's on here. I want you to call me in a little bit, Levon, or I'll call you. And I want to find out if you heard anything from Jeff and Rick. And then, Lord, I pray for Pastor Bill Underwood. And I ask you, God, to move in his his family, his life, his physical need. You've done a wonderful work. We did it. We had a message on here from him. He preached and told us about this wonderful thing where they get replaced his heart and he's living, getting to live. God and preaching the gospel. God is wife, Lord. And bless them and their church there in Bakersfield, Lord. Do a work in that Pentecost Holiness Church. Lord, today, God, we ask, ask it in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, God, for all our preachers and pastors, and evangelists, Lord, and missionaries. God, we pray, God, for our leadership, Lord, in all out departments of our organization, God this country Lord we pray for the president we pray for his cabinet we pray for our Congress Lord we pray for each one of these people we pray in the name of Jesus God we ask your goodness and grace to come upon their lives we pray Father God we pray for our local local city our county our state Lord we pray for it Lord we ask God we come to you for our children for our grandchildren, my nieces, nephews, my cousins, my aunts, uncles, brother-in-laws, sister-in-laws, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for Sarah. Lord, I don't know where Sarah's at, and I want to know. My granddaughter, Sarah, Lord. I pray for her. I pray for Jack and his needing a job, Lord. I pray, God, you'd bless him and open the door for his job, for his work, Father God. I pray, Father. God, let him find a, a, a place that he's happy. And Lord, and his family, Lord, and help him to get in, in, in church someplace and live for you. And God, we just ask it in the name of Jesus, all my children, Lord, to find you as their Savior, Lord grandchildren all Lord we pray Father God Lord I pray for my son Ron God today that has arthritis God in his body Lord we ask you to heal his body heal his mind his spirit God bring into you I pray Jesus his wife Father God my son Lou and my daughter Sharman and, and Deanna God we pray for them and their families Lord we pray Jesus God, that you would meet the needs of the world. Lord, I pray, Father God, for our military and the spouses at home, Lord. 
Lord, I pray for these, Father God, for the fire department, the police department, Lord, the hospital workers, the ambulance drivers. God, as a trucker, I pray for those truckers who are going up and down the road today. God, that you'd keep them safe. God, they make it home one more night. In the name of Jesus, we ask it, Lord. We praise you, Father God. Give you the glory in Jesus' name. We'll be back Monday at 6 o'clock in the morning. Monday morning. Feel like God is uh, moving in a new direction as far as in my life and what He'd have me to do. And we're going to preach, be preaching the Word. Some way or somehow, we're going to bring the Word to you if it's God's will come Monday and all next week. And uh, one day, one day uh, next week, we're going to have communion. So I'll tell you on Monday what when that'll be and uh, have your juice ready and your cracker. And we'll take communion together. We'll be in a new month here this, in June already. This is May 27th. So right here in, in this Labor Day weekend, or, or Memorial Day weekend, I think it is, Lord, that you keep these people safe on the highway. In the name of Jesus.